Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. This is the Friday, June 18, 2021 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Chris Robinson. And please do not adjust your television sets. Um, a TV show that meant a lot to me as a kid was WKRP in Cincinnati. And yesterday, the actor who played Herb Tarlick, famous for coats like this, passed away. I was given this as a gift years ago by friends in North Iowa, so I thought, why not? Chris, is this a coat that would work to stand out in the pits? Would, I, would they let me onto the pits to trade this? Oh, absolutely. Trade with this? Yeah, they let you wear whatever you want on your jacket. <laughs> as long as your check's cleared and your margins were clean. That's right. But it is a, there's another reason for wearing this, and it is something to do with the 70s. We talked about inflation. It's really hard to not necessarily go back to, is this a repeat of the 70s when we keep hearing all of this talk about the 70s? Or am I just making a mountain out of a anthill? It certainly has become the new story. I call it the story du jour. It's all you ever hear about. Once COVID started drifting away, it's like, what's the new scary thing we can talk about in the financial press? It's inflation. Uh, you know, so here's, here's, the, here's my question about inflation. If it comes back, why hasn't it come back since 08? We spent trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars. We spent enough money to buy the planet inflation. And we haven't gotten it. So it's been, there's been a leak somewhere. That, that's my question. So is this little blip up that we've had to 2 or 3 or 4%, whatever it is, this last little blip, is this the beginning of what it is? Well, for I think for six, seven, eight years, we've been told that the Fed wants a 2% inflation core rate. We get there and it's like, oh, what happens if it goes to 6 or 2 or 3? So it's interesting to watch this. Um, uh, I think that how that's going to play out is for somebody with a higher IQ or certainly a higher pay grade than me. But I, I always, I'm concerned about that. When everybody starts talking about the same thing, I, it tends to be less and less important. So that's my concern there. The things that really can jump up and hurt you are the things that nobody talks about. So if everybody's expecting inflation, you know, is it going to come in? So, you know, a little bit of inflation is probably good. We need it. They want it. They want 2%. The problem is, is what happens if they do have to start raising rates? Because if you go from one and a half percent ten-year rate to two or three or four, how does that hurt you? Well, it hurts the uh, ability for the government to spend more money because all of a sudden, if you're paying a thirty trillion dollar debt and you're zero percent, and the interest rate goes to one or two or three percent, you've got a problem to service that debt. So that's what everybody's really worried about, yeah. you know? So is it gonna happen? I hope not. You and I, oh, I'm older than you, but I can remember the 70s and the whip inflation now. When, and coats you know what like I mean? this. And coats like that. Mm -hmm. I had a coat like that, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so we'll see. I, I think that uh, uh, we won't know for another six months. I gotta remember, we just spent $6 trillion, $8 trillion coming out of this pandemic. We'll see where that happens. That seemed that would argue, plenty argue that that's that would be fuel for the inflation fuel fire. Inflation. All right, so let's start with uh, some of our great Twitter questions and Facebook that we got this week. Aaron in Ochi, Nile, where it is dry, and we're going to talk about weather in a moment. But first, Aaron's asking: We did some major technical damage to the charts. Have we limited the max upside to any rally now, regardless of how bad the drought gets? I don't think till we get through pollination. Uh, for corn, we'll know really what the potential damage is for corn. So until that happens, every 12 hours we get another uh, weather forecast. Uh, if they put the rain, the rain in, we break 30 or 40 cents. They take it out, we really we rally 30 or 40 cents. So what are the big levels? Well, two times we've gotten to six dollar corn, and nobody really wanted to sell it. Maybe the second time is the third time the charm. I think this time maybe some people will say, you know what? I'm not going to miss it this time because we were there once, we were there twice. You know, fool me once, fool me twice. So that's the big level, six dollars. Same thing for soybeans. Um, you know, can we get new crop back up towards 15? Right, we topped out of 1480, then had you know a three dollar collapse in, in a month. Um, I think if we get back to 13, 14, and we are already there, people certainly need to take a look and say, you know what, maybe this is something that I should. Be happy to sell, uh, especially when you started the year and you were happy to, more than happy to sell $10 beans. 
This question is tied into weather and it's tied into the ratings that come in on Monday's chat and Iowa is asking us via Facebook traders are going to be so baffled when the good to excellent rating for Iowa corn goes down 14% again next week. I mean, there is rain in the forecast, so the corn is great, right? <laughs> it depends on if it's your corn or your neighbor's corn, right? Which corn, which corn is great? You know, we saw that at the beginning of this week. The good to excellent ratings dropped and corn dropped. And that was kind of the first sign that it was something maybe we topped out a little bit because the previous Friday, you know, people were extremely bold up, ready for the weekend, you know, couldn't, couldn't get bold up enough. So when that condition rating came out and we fell, when the market gets good news and falls, that's a sign that there's something's off. And that should have been, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. That was one of the first things I was taught. When the market gets good news and doesn't follow through with it, look around, see what are you missing. So I would say it's nice. If you're a bull, you want to see the good to excellent rating drop lower. That would certainly be supportive. But I don't know if it's the be all and end all. I think what's really more con concerning is if uh, um, we get the good rains. An inch or two of rains isn't gonna, is not going to make a difference. So again, we're into that time of the year. In the next two weeks, it's pollination, pollination. Well, you have people, uh, you have producers in parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania saying, don't tell anybody, we actually have rains, we actually might have a crop. It's hard to look past your 40 or what you see out the window of your neighbor's 40. And that's just something you gotta remember, this is a big place, millions of acres out there, right? Yeah, we just saw that with spring wheat, we were talking about that, you know, I've got, Clients grow in spring weight and they're like, look at this. It's, it looks literally like, you know, a football field. And uh, he goes, how can we break a dollar? Because they put a little rain in the forecast. And said, the market, the market does what the market is going to do. Uh, that's why when it gives you good opportunities, you've got to take advantage of it. Because um, if you're looking for a rational explanation for these markets, you know, be looking a long, long time. So I always tell guys I'm working with, I don't care if you're a bull or a bear. If it gets to your level and you're happy, take action, all right? And then once you've taken action, you can do something to mitigate what happens after that. But, um, you know, nothing beats a good cash sale. I would say that over and over again. At the end of the day, I'd rather see you make a good ha cash sale than see you make a dollar on a hedge. So you're going to agree with Tom and Greeley's, uh, Greeley, Iowa's question then with the sell-off we had this week. Is this the time? to buy more calls and puts on corn and soybeans. Absolutely, especially if you sold, got oversold, and you, you know who you are if you're out there. If you got oversold at $4 corn and $10 beans, and you've been waiting for the break, and we're two weeks away from pollination, and we just got that break, yeah, step in there. I know it's scary. It's scary to step in front of a bus when it's just stopped in front of you and almost ran you over, but that's when you have to step in there and buy it. And again, the good thing is you don't have to go bananas. You don't have to spend uh, a ton of money to get long in this type of market. You could spend 10, 12, 13 cents. If you want to do a weekly option, you can spend a nickel. Um, believe it or not, those have been some of the biggest uh, percentage uh, gainers and losers over the past week. I mean, if uh, you dropped, if you had a weekly option that you paid a nickel for and we drop a dollar, that's a pretty good payoff. And that has happened. So look at the weekly options. Um, you can look at the shorter dated new crop options. Like if you want to reown new crop corn, you can buy an August call, which keeps you long through July 23rd. It's about, I don't forget exactly how many days that is, but you're right, you're long on paper, new crop corn, and you don't have to spend a fortune. So I would say that. And if you're an end user, absolutely, positively. If the worst thing that would happen to you would to see $8 corn or $20 beans, something crazy like that, the only way you can defend against that is buying calls when the market breaks. So a question that we had in the office today was, what happens if I go out to spray for two hours and the market does what it did yesterday? How do I protect myself in that window? Because I can't stare at my phone the entire time. Okay, this is, this is great. I'm glad you brought this up. There's a difference between hedging and chasing. <laughs> okay, when, the, when you get to $6 corn and you can buy a 550 put for a reasonable amount of money, you, you, buy the, you buy it then. You don't buy the 550 put after it's traded down to, to 570. So you've got to have the hedge on before the break. It's hard to do because the easiest thing for most people to do, it's human nature, is let's wait. Let's do nothing. 
And then again, uh, you end up chasing the market. So if it gets to a good level, be proactive, bite the bullet, because yeah, while you're out in the field for two hours and come back in, you're like, what happened? That 10 cent put that you paid for, for a uh, 550 put, it's worth 34 cents. And you're going, Phew, I'm glad I spent my 10 cents. So that, that's the way you have to have it. You've got to have the hedge on before the move. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to bring this up, but you mentioned it uh, this afternoon. The dairy market, huge up, huge down. We're kind of in the middle now. This whipsaw move is not isolated to just one or two things. It can happen anywhere. Talk a little bit about dairy for a moment. And is this thing leaning one way or the other? Well, there's so many factors that went into that dairy deal, right? They shut down the, con the, the, the country. We dropped to 11 bucks. It was... 20-year lows or 10-year lows, I forget. It was a multi-year low, right? And then, lo and behold, as soon as we started to, to reopen and they started talking about reopening the schools, whew, you know, we blew back up to all-time highs. So we went from $11 to $24. And some we, government buying, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Step in and help people. I mean, I, nobody liked the, the uh, video of them dumping milk down the drain, right? Unlike crude oil, where crude oil went negative, what's well, you can't dump crude oil out in, into your trade. It's illegal. You'll get a visitor. You'll yeah. get a visitor. So that's what happened. You had you had supply with nowhere to go, and then as soon as things started getting back to normal and they started opening, the, uh, talking about opening the schools again, that's a big demand thing there. So, you know, to see uh, a, a ten-year low to an all-time high within basically three months. No, nobody's seen that. So, mm -hmm. again, how do you manage that? You've got to get your risk on paper. The magic number seems to be, if you're a dairy guy, if you can protect $0.20 cents or you know, the $20 level, that's a good level to protect because the all-time high is 24 And then if you have that on at 20 and it drops to 11 you're feeling a whole lot better about things. And, again, just like we just said, though, you've got to have the put on. You have to have the protection on before it breaks. All right, Chris. Good luck on buying the Chicago Bears, by the way. The Arlington Heights Bears. Oh, sorry. Let me get that right. <laughs> Thank you. Chris Robinson, good to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. That'll do it for Market Plus. Next week, we will look at the possibility of eradicating famine, and Jeff French will join us to break down the commodity markets. Thank you so much for watching, listening, or reading. Please have a great week.